This video is going to be the beginning of a multi-part, uh, at least two, maybe three videos, on measuring the, the characteristics of two-port networks. Now, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute, but basically, this is measuring uh, RF transmission lines, antennas, dummy loads, uh, things like that, filters, and so on. These are some of the pieces of equipment that we're going to talk about. The, uh, in the back here is a spectrum analyzer made by SignalHound, the SA44B that you've seen in some of our prior videos. I know you've seen at least one and maybe two or prior videos on this Rig Expert AA230 Zoom. This is uh, an antenna analyzer and a bunch of other stuff. This is an SWR meter and it's kind of the, the old vintage or traditional way of checking the uh, checking transmission lines and antennas. And then on the left is a new acquisition. This is a Mini VNA Tiny Plus. It's a plus because you may notice that unlike the old original, which is, comes in a blue case, this is in a white or in a red case. And I'm told that this has superior uh, characteristics in the the, uh, the clock circuitry and so on. It's more stable and more accurate. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a mini review on this uh, at some point. But in addition to those, I thought it might also be useful to look at some of the other possibilities, like this Rigol scope here that you see doing a fast Fourier transform. And above it, over here, is the uh, Rigol DSA815 that uh, kind of an old, uh, an old standby, old, I don't know, four or five years old anyway. To the left of that is one you may have also seen. It's an NSTEC, uh, I think it's a GSP 730, yes. And then over to the left is uh, a unit that I haven't talked much about, but uh, is a Siglent spectrum analyzer with a uh, tracking generator. That is the SSA 3032X. Now, we're not going to be getting into heavy detail on any of these. What we're basically going to be doing is talking about where the strengths and weaknesses of this various, these various pieces of equipment are when measuring RF characteristics, uh, transmission lines, and so on, but basically two-port networks. So. Uh, let's take a brief review of what a two-port network is all about and scattering parameters, nothing really deep, and then uh, we'll get on with comparing some of these things. I think it would be useful for those of you that either haven't seen this in a while or maybe have never seen the theory of two-port networks, if we gave a little bit of a, of a top-down look at the... Uh, the measurement of these networks. Now understand, a two-port network is just a model. This could be a transmission line with some kind of load at this end, maybe a, a, an antenna or just a, a, an amplifier or something. And generally it has uh, an input port and an output port, although uh, actually what you will find is that the theory doesn't really make any difference between the input and the output. In other words, signals can flow from the output to the input, or I should say from the right to the left, as easily as from the left to the right. And that's part of what we measure. And the uh, reason for these particular kinds of measurements, and they're called scattering parameters and transfer parameters, and we will look at them very briefly, but don't worry, not much math, is that when you begin measuring at radio frequencies, what you discover is the traditional ways of measuring voltage and current no longer are really practical. 
Instead, what you wind up having to do is measuring power waves, just how much power is going in here, how much is being reflected, how much is being transferred to the outside, and how much of the signal here is flowing back to this side. And th those give rise to what are called scattering parameters. We're not going to deal with scattering parameters except just to, to look at how they wind up being displayed on some of these instruments. There also are a set of parameters called transfer parameters that basically do the same thing. We won't talk about those at all. So let's take a look at what some of these instruments might be uh, more useful for. This, this is a Rigol uh, DS4000 oscilloscope operating in the FFT mode. And an oscilloscope, remember, is simply a device that measures. So, with regard to things like scattering parameters, the, uh, it can't measure uh, scattering parameters because that requires a source of a synchronized source of energy, of power. Remember, that requires that we put power into a port and measure the reflected power and the power out of the other port and so on. An FFT is simply a frequency domain display of a, a time domain signal. So, in this case, we have a time domain signal on channel 1, this square wave. It's just the calibration signal for the oscilloscope. And then below it you see the frequency uh, domain. This has a center frequency of about 4.3, so this is about 4. Uh, I think this is around a kilohertz. Uh, yeah, well, 900 and something hertz. Uh, so this is about a kilohertz. And this is adjusted to display uh, dB volts versus frequency. And an FFT on a scope can be quite useful. It's limited generally by two things. One is the bandwidth of the scope itself, uh, which can be uh, depends on the kind of scope. But for example, my rule of thumb is divide the bandwidth of the scope by three in evaluating the uh, FFT performance. In other words, a 100 megahertz scope is generally useful for signals up to about 30 megahertz in the FFT uh, area. So in this case, this is a uh, 400 or 450 megahertz scope. It's been upgraded to uh, to much higher frequency. So I would use this up to about 100 megahertz, but that's nowhere near the range of the spectrum analyzers and uh, network analyzers that we're going to look at in some of the rest of this. So FFT is pretty good on a scope. Uh, up to uh, maybe the high end of the amateur HF bands works pretty good. Above that, maybe not, uh, at least for a 100 megahertz scope. Very good for doing measurements at audio frequencies, audio amplifiers, things like that. Now we're looking at the Rigol DSA-815. Once again, this is a spectrum analyzer, however, it has a tracking generator. So it does have a source of power that can be applied, and you can do transmission measurements by applying the tracking generator to one side and uh, reading the power coming through on the other side on the spectrum analyzer. You also can do reflection measurements. This is a mini circuits. Uh, 
ZFDC 30, I'm sorry, 20-5-N+. Hope you can read that there. Uh, and with this, you can do reflection measurements. What you do is you apply the tracking generator to the output. You use the coupling port to the input of the spectrum analyzer, and then you attach things to uh, to this input port. And basically what it will do is it will measure reflections. Now that can be uh, stated as SWR or as uh, return loss. I'm not going to do this. Uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about using the, uh, the uh, Actually, Rigol makes their own version of this. I didn't buy the Rigol SWR bridge, uh, partly because I wanted to use mini circuits equipment. I'm more familiar with that, and so that's what I've been using. But uh, the limitations of the DSA815 are it only goes to one and a half gigahertz. Now, of course, that's three times as much as my oscilloscope that you just saw. But it still does not get me up into the ISM band where uh, some of the experiments I do uh, operate in the 2.4 to, to 2.8 uh, gigahertz range. So while this is a very useful instrument and can do uh, both reflection and transmission, uh, it's an old standby. I have uh, a couple of other spectrum analyzers, in fact uh, three others, that I use because they operate at higher frequencies than the Rigol. One of the spectrum analyzers that I use, uh, actually quite a bit, it's one of my favorites, is this Instec GSP730. It was the first spectrum analyzer that I had in my home lab. I had, of course, used some very expensive HP and other uh, analyzers and uh, spectrum analyzers uh, in my professional work, but uh, in my home lab, this was my first. And like your first love, it's, uh, you know, it has a special place in your heart. But this one actually has two features that uh, recommend it over the DSA-815. Now, it doesn't do everything the DSA does. It doesn't have a tracking generator, for example. It doesn't have quite the noise performance, the, the low noise floor that the DSA has. But it does have the ability to display two frequency bands at the same time. And if you uh, go back and look at my uh, series on spectrum analyzers, uh, it, in there I show how that how that works. That can be very useful because it allows you to look at a fundamental frequency, for example, and spread it out quite a bit and go look at the uh, at a harmonic. Spread that as well. Second thing is this uh, spectrum analyzer will go up to 3 gigahertz. So it does cover the ISM band where things that I've been interested in are uh, going on. Another spectrum analyzer that I like very much is uh, this Siglent SSA 3032X, uh, which I've been using for about a year. Now, like the Rigol, this has a, spec has a uh, tracking generator, so it can do both transmission and reflection measurements. Unlike the Rigol, it goes to 3 gigahertz, which actually I think it goes to 3.2 or 3.3 gigahertz and yeah, 3.2 it looks like is what it says and the uh, and it has a much lower noise floor this is a much better spectrum analyzer than the Rigol of course it's a much later model too uh, but this is really my go-to spectrum analyzer now if I want the absolute best measurements of uh, low noise floor uh, circuits. However, 
this one does stop at 3.2 gigahertz. Now that may sound like quite a bit, but there are occasions where it's useful to go even higher than that. So let me show you yet another spectrum analyzer that I have used and that goes to uh, about four, almost four and a half gigahertz. This is a Signal Hound SA44B. It's a USB uh, spectrum analyzer. It's, it's sort of the bottom of their line, uh, but it does have the advantage that it goes out to 4.4 gigahertz, and the software that comes with this, the call Spike, is really powerful. It's free. Uh, uh, comes with, in other words, when you buy an SA44, they send you a, a disc with the software on it, but you can also download it from their website. And the, especially the digital modulation capabilities of the Spike software when combined with this Spectrum Analyzer, I find particularly useful. Now, I've done a series of uh, videos on uh, digital modulation. Uh, if you are interested in those areas, including how the Spike software works with things like quadrature amplitude modulation, binary phase shift keying, uh, if those things sound interesting to you, take a look at some of my videos on digital modulation uh, and you'll see me using this uh, spectrum analyzer quite a bit. The, uh, I considered getting a, uh, by the way, one of the problems is without a tracking generator, this will not allow me to do measurements in the, uh, uh, in the ISM band. Uh, of scattering parameters. I considered getting a, uh, Tracking generator. Uh, Signal Hound has one. Let me show you that one. This is the TG44A tracking generator, which uh, pairs with the SA44B. It goes out to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, however, notice the price, $600. And I was looking for a way for a, an experimenter to be able to do ISM measurements, both reflection and transmission, out into the ISM band. By the time you combine this tracking generator with the Signal Hound SA44, which costs nearly $1,000, you're looking at $1,600. Now, they do offer a bundling discount of uh, I'm not very sure I remember exactly how much, maybe 10%. So it could be $1,500 or uh, $1,450 or anyway, but it's in the $1,500 range. That's a little outside the range of many experimenters and ham radio operators and so on. So that is why I considered getting uh, a mini VNA Tiny. Then when I saw Andrew Andreas Spies, I think I'm pronouncing that right. His video, let me show you that. So this is the video I was watching that first made me aware of the uh, VNA Tiny Plus. And like I say, it's Andreas Spies. It's his number 191 called Optimizing Antennas Using a Cheap N1201SA VNA. Now, the video is actually more about that unit, but he talks about the fact that the VNA Tiny has the improved uh, oscillator or uh, reference stability over the uh, one that is currently being sold. I'll call it the blue VNA. This one I'll call the red VNA. So uh, I decided to order the red VNA. It costs almost as much. It's a little less uh, if you order it from China than the blue VNA. 
but uh, I thought I would take a chance on it and I'm uh, glad I did and like I say I'm going to be doing a little bit of a mini review in, a, in the next video but uh, the uh, this is where I heard about it. I like giving credit. I, I don't want to show you this for copyright reasons, uh, just uh, just the still photo. But nonetheless, I suggest you go over and take a look at this. It's a very interesting video in its own right, and it introduces the Mini VNA Tiny uh, Plus. Okay, so uh, where are we? Well, we've looked at a number of alternatives. The uh, uh, I will probably mention some others in, in the future, like the Rig Expert. Uh, unfortunately, the Rig Expert only goes to mine only goes to 230 megahertz, so it's not very useful up in the higher frequency ranges. Uh, but it is a very good uh, antenna analyzer. I use it for ham radio, and I got it because I was putting up some new antennas and I wanted to be able to check them. It really makes it uh, easy, particularly a, uh, I was putting up an in-fed, uh, multi-band in-fed antenna, and I wanted to be able to get the dimensions correct, and it really helped out in that. For I'm not going to do a, a review of that. There are plenty of those on YouTube as well. But at any rate, I hope that this is a is a pretty good introduction to the general area of RF measurement. And then, uh, in, as I say, in the next video, I'm going to do kind of a mini review of the uh, red VNA. And in that, I'll actually do some measurements and show you how you do both reflection and transmission. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative. And you'll stay tuned for the next video. In the meantime, have a nice day.